fans and welcome. In today's episode, we have this, which is a Look 695. It has been sent to me by a chap from Scotland. And he wants a new bottom bracket fitted to this fine piece of French engineering. Uh, but before we go and fit the new bottom bracket, I'll talk you a little bit around this look frame. Now, those who are regular viewers to my channel will know I rate looks engineering. And this is a fine example of some of the things that they do that other companies do not do. Now, it may be pretty obvious, but this is not a current edition frame. The current one is a look 795 Blade RS. And this one is a few years old. So it's about the same age as the Canyon that was on uh, a few weeks ago. Now this frame has seen a bit of use and it's got a few little marks on there and I'll go through them. Um, so that's the frame. The other thing that came with it was, is the proprietary Look Z crank set. So we'll go through that as well. And this, which is, we've got very good engineering, and then we've also got shite, which is this, which is the adapter thing that Look will sell you if you want to use a, um, what's the word, a BSA bottom bracket with this frame. So this is the Look Z crank set. There are some interesting features about this. The most obvious one in terms of the ergonomics is this lobe that's in the end there. By rotating that, uh, into three positions, you've got 170mm, 172 and 175 on the same crank. The other thing that is quite striking about this is this is one piece made out of carbon. Uh, that is technically extremely difficult to do. And in the midst of the one piece carbon, we've also got some interesting things happening in terms of fit. So the bearing on that side is a uh, six eight uh, one zero and uh, the bearing on this side is also six eight one zero but the, the bearing on that side is um, an interference on the inner race the bearing on this side is an interference on the frame so if I undo this little lock nut this bearing pulls off so that seat there is aluminium, I'm guessing it's aluminium, feels like aluminium, um, and the same one on the other side, and they've had to machine some incredibly fine pitch thread into there to give you the uh, the preload adjuster. This is the bearing that, that came out from it, and it is a yeah, 6810, this one just says look cycle on it, um, it might be difficult to read but it just says look cycle on it. I would say that was an SNR bearing. Uh, that's just been rebranded to Look Cycle. It doesn't have any other name on it. And um, what's that say? No, there's no other names on it, and there's no other markings. But I think that's an SNR bearing. If you're not familiar with who SNR are, uh, SNR is or was the bearing division of the Renault car company. It was spun off, and it became an independent company. And then NTN bought them, so now they're called NTN SNR. So if you buy a SNR bearing, you're basically getting an NTN bearing. So that is the crank set. This one is obviously used, well used. Um, there's a couple of things that I noticed on this one. So the bolt here is has been changed and that one uh, has seen better days because the head off that one snaps off. But overall, it's it's in pretty good nick. Um, and uh, I'm <laughs> Praxis chain ring, so this comes with Praxis chain rings. I'm not a fan of Praxis chain rings to be honest. I don't think they shift all that well. Um, but I guess it's, everyone's different. But yeah, that's just my thought. Now this is a proprietary crank set. So it's called BB65. And that's because the outside diameter of the bearing is 65 mil. If I compare that to a, an NTN bearing. So if I get one out of my pocket. Fresh. Box fresh. So there's the um, 6810 and there's a 6806, so that's a BB30 bearing. So the BB65 bearing is massive. So the outside 65, the inside is 50 versus this one, which is 30 on the inside 
and 42 on the outside. So this is a huge difference. In terms of width, there's not actually that much difference. I think they're the same. I think it's a seven mil bearing. Um, but this one is, is totally different. So now we come on to the bottom bracket. So this aperture here is 65 mil. Uh, and I can't remember what that width was. I had a feeling inkling was 63, but I could be wrong. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is aluminium all the way through. So it's one piece of aluminium from that side all the way through to here. Um, as a result, the concentricity on this is very, very good. Now, it is irrespective of which look 695 you get, you'll be getting the same method or design method for that bottom bracket. Um, this is almost like a textbook bearing installation. So going from this side to the far side, you've got a lip here, which is the lead to push the bearing in. So that a lot of bikes don't even have that. Then this depth is straight out of the SKF book. And then this lip is also straight out of the SKF book. So the, the dimensions of that and that are basically what the bearing manufacturer recommends. This lip here is reinforced on the back, so it provides a very, very secure uh, mounting method. And there's no stress razor there because it's actually chamfered going into the uh, into the hole. You probably just about see it on the far side. As you go through, because this is one piece, it remains concentric all the way to the other side. Whoever's made this has made the bottom bracket and then the other bits have bolted to it. There's also holes that are there, I guess, for the DI2 wires or um, you know, whatever cables you want to put onto it. Um, those um, holes have been made after this frame has been produced because you can the, the end of the hole is completely flat. So that's a post carbon manufacturing process. So the hole's been drilled afterwards. Overall, this is probably the best in terms of engineering design. So it's not, um, it's, it's out of the, well, it's a strange one because no one else uses a standard apart from look. And you obviously need that ex really expensive crank uh, to go in it but as far as the engineering goes in terms of adhering to standards and the total method and the methodology with how this has been made it is far superior to the canyon that was on the other day um, and even by modern standards and we we're only talking five or six years since this frame was made uh, it is still very very good now the fit of the bearing on this side the bearing on this side is um, an interference on the out side of the bearing or the inside of the frame. So there's an interference there. So this bearing is basically bigger than that hole. Now on the other side, on this side, the bearing is um, an interference on the crank set and it's supposed to be a push fit on the frame. Now I've measured all of this um, and it is probably within 0.01 to 0.02 millimeters of what it should be. There are a few little problems and the biggest problem is why the chap sent me it. And that's because the bearing has spun. So what that technically means is if you imagine the bearing is having the inner race rotating um, while the outer race is fixed, when a bearing spins, colloquially in engineering, the whole thing locks up and the entire thing rotates. Uh, and that's what's happened in this frame. Um, so you can see the spin marks on that side. And also on that side, so it's spun on both sides. This is the look BB65 to BSA adapter that they will sell you. So the chap sent me this as well. Um, ew, God, this is just awful. Really, really bad. It's flimsy as anything. So it's cast aluminium, um, and they put a BSA thread in that side and that side. So it's 1.37 by 24 teeth. Sorry, 1.37 inches by 24 teeth per inch. 
it's flimsy um, and it's not really cutting it. So when the chap's put it in, he's still got a load of creak. So I need to do something to sort these problems out. Now there are a few marks on this frame. Now going round the bottom bracket, you can probably just see a mark. Now I thought that was a uh, possibly a crack, but it looked more like a um, crack in the paintwork. Now scan won't actually pick that up because it's too close to the uh, object that's, well, the, the metal of the, um, the bottom bracket. So the NDT guy I spoke to said, don't even bother. Also fairly superficial, but there's a load of the lacquer that's coming off here. I guess if you're riding around in, uh, in the UK, that isn't too uncommon because you get uh, bits of road grit and crap that come up and hit that area. It's also on the crank side, so if you get some dirt or something and it drags it round, it tends to trash that bit. Now there are some features on this frame that you don't get on um, other frames. And the most obvious one for me is how thick the carbon is. So this is by no means a weight weenie frame. <clears throat> it's quite heavy, but you're, it's built to last, so it's thick in places. It also comes with things that other people don't have, like, for example, rev nuts that are metal, um, as in the sense they're steel rev nuts as opposed to aluminium, which colloquially in the aerospace industry we don't really call a metal for some odd reason. Anyway, it's, it's, that's quite a nice feature because it's less likely to corrode. The other thing is the frame itself is well, I've left the top one, um, but it is um, has one of these seat posts that you need to cut in order to uh, to to size it up for yourself, and that always puts me off. So um, that that's not really a good thing. Uh, the rest of the frame, in terms of carbon layup, it is by no means cutting edge by modern standards. Uh, but the way this has been made, I know Raul Lucia from Lucia Technics said. This was um, pretty, pretty well, he said it was pretty poor on the inside. Now when I had the NDT guy have a look at it, he said it was it was pretty, uh, well, he's, he, in his opinion, he thought it was above average. There are a couple of voids in it, but overall, nothing really to complain about. Obviously, I can only talk about what's put in front of me, and th by that, this frame is, is, is okay, so, um, Certainly I would ride it and he said he would ride it as well. And now for today's highlight, we have the PowerPoint, which is the usual Hambini PowerPoint perfection or roast by PowerPoint or ream by PowerPoint. Uh, some have said rape by PowerPoint, but I think that's politically incorrect. And as you all know, I do like to be politically correct. So let's start with the PowerPoint. Fuck. Where's the button? Right, here we go. What's the title going to be? Well, it's a presentation without the use, usual fucking useless fucking wankers from the bicycle industry. So this time we have something that is good. First of all, a shout out. FTP, fuck the police. Yes, those of you in the police who keep pulling me over for you know, driving a fast car fast. I mean, what the fuck else do you drive a car for? Gotta drive it fast. Anyway, um, uh, yes, fuck the police. Right. By Hambini, aged five. Apologies for the lack of t-shirts. Uh, coronavirus in the Far East and all that shit has resulted in, in my order being delayed. But there we go. Introduction. So the Look 695 is circa 2013 2014 so around the same time as that canyon bike that we reamed last week or the week before that um it's by no means an early carbon fiber bike um and if you are of the opinion that carbon fiber manufacturing techniques have changed in the last six years you are a fruitcake and you need to be disciplined because they haven't. It's still the same kind of process. You put the carbon cloth or whatever down and um, epoxy goes around, you pressurise it, stick it in an oven and jobs are good. 
or you can do it the time way. So time use RTM, which is more like a weaving method. Now look, um, now if you've seen my aero build bike where I'm doing it on the cheap, that is almost a 20 year old frame. So look, have been doing carbon for circa 20 years, probably more than that, I'm not quite sure. If you are a look employee, and some of you do um, email me every now and again, then you can set the record straight maybe in the comments box below. Now, for this um, bike, I mean, the standout feature is the crank set because the crank set is, well, it's one piece and, um, you know, as a thing of beauty, the integration of aluminium and carbon as an engineer, is it good? Yes, it is. So, um, you know, I was quite impressed with that. It's got BB65. There are no other bikes apart from look ones or the copies that have um, BB65. Made in Tunisia. So it was made in a look factory, which is unusual because in this day and age, everything tends to be subcontracted out. So it's not, it's unusual. Right, this is an example of what good looks like. Now, I, I, it almost feels ridiculous that I'm doing a presentation about what I would consider to be normal production methods and techniques, but it, it has just literally come to that. So in a world of shit, look are just, in this frame in particular is just, um, what can I say? It, it's, it's, it, it looks like someone has engineered it using good design practices and, you know, just put it out there. It's, it's nothing exceptional. It's nothing completely untoward. Um, and there's nothing extraordinary about it, apart from prob probably the crank set. Uh, but in, in, a, in, in the world of bicycles, this is good. It makes themselves look good. Right. BB65. Now, you may not have heard of this, but BB65 uses... 6810 bearings so they are uh, 50 by 65 by 7 now if you want to decipher this um laser pen right six so this six here indicates it's a deep groove ball bearing now eight is effectively the outside diameter um it actually goes, that, that number there starts seven. So seven's a really slender bearing, and then it goes eight, nine, zero. So a zero is basically a, a much more beefy bearing than one with a seven. Um, and then these last two digits, you multiply by five, and it gives you the bore size. So 10 times five gives you 50, which is this, okay? The other dimensions are based on the geometric progression. So the 65, which is the outside diameter, and the seven, uh, there's a geometric pro um, sequence for that. Um, right, the Z crank set is a bit unusual because you can change the um, effective length of the crank by just rotating the lobe at the end. So you get uh, 170, 172.5, and 175 all on one crank so that's quite good um and it's a metal carbon composite which is i mean the way it's been married together i don't know how they all have done it but there you go um it's unusual because there's an interference on um the axle on one side so on the drive side um and it's press fit on the other so, um, or press fit or transition fit, depending on how you want to call it. Um, it is, that bit is very, very well thought out and unusual. So it's, it's well, just good. It is very difficult for the usual scumbags from, mainly from the Far East to counterfeit. Um, the carbon metal crank set is, is very difficult to counterfeit. That if you took a copy of it, it's and I, well, I don't know how you could make it. It's very, very difficult to counterfeit. Now I have seen some Look Six Nine Five bikes with um, what are they called threaded bottom brackets and BB Thirty or P 
PF30 bottom brackets. They're basically fakes. Um, BB65 is, is, is tricky to counterfeit, okay? Right. Now, the bearing arrangement is, well, I just mentioned it's unusual. Now, on the left-hand side, we have Shimano, BB30, BB386 Evo, basically everything apart from Campag. Um, and these have effectively, or should have, an N7 interference on the outside of the bearing, so here, and um, the inside is loose, or well, loose, or well, in a sliding fit. Now, if you're not familiar with fits and tolerances, um, you need to, uh, first of all, understand how this works. So the H, the seven, this loose is just me writing in. So the H there, small letter, that means it's a shaft fit. N here is a capital, so it's the housing fit. So in this case, H gives you the, H, the letter gives you the, the amount of uh, clearance or interference. So H is sliding, N is interference. And then the seven is effectively the accuracy of the hole. Um, so the smaller the number, the more accurate the hole. So seven is pretty much run of the mill. Um, and you know, Shimano H7 on the shaft and N7 on the outside of the bearing. Right, if we go over here to the Look Z cranks, and I oh, forgot, forgot to say, it's the same on both sides. So this bit here is H7, and this bit on the outside is N7. Okay. Now on the Look Z crank set, it's a bit different here because, okay, there's the preload collar there, which I've just marked for, for well, I've just marked it. On the drive side, there's an M5 interface. Well, I think it's M5. I'm not quite sure. Um, M5 interference on the axle to the bearing. So um, that is quite an accurate hole. Bear in mind, because the diameter is bigger, so it's 50 mil, it might make them look a bit better than they actually are. But anyway, it's an M5 interference there. It's a J5 on the outside. And J5 is a transition, and obviously capital because it's outside. Uh, J5 transition on the inner, on the non-drive side, and M5 interference on the outer. So the thing to note here is, based on my measurements, and I've done quite a few, uh, look use a 5 tolerance, whereas everyone else is using 7, and if you're Cervelo, it's like an 11, which is like dog shit. Now... Let me show you an interference table. Right, discard. Right, so this is um, the NTN book, and it gives you housing and shaft fit. So this is basically a cutout of the bearing, half of it, and you've got housing and shaft. Now, if I zoom in, this is what all of this K7, J7, and all that kind of stuff means. If I just explain the letters first of all, so the G and the H, if you look at the housing, G moves it away, so it becomes more slack. If you go H, it moves it towards the, the outside of the bearing. J gives you a bit of interference, K is more of an interference, M is more of an interference, N, P, you can see that how that's going. The number indicates how wide the boundary is. So if you compare G6 and G7, G7 is a wider tolerance than G6, so that means it's a more accurate hole, the G6 is a more accurate hole. And then you've got the same deal with H, so H6 is a more tight tolerance than H8. Um, and you can apply these numbers and letters all the way through. Now, if you look at um, the shaft, it's the same deal. So G5, G6, H5, H6, J5, J6. Um, and that is, if you look at these letters, they are small. And that is um, because 
they are shaft fit. Uh, in fact, I think there's a typo there. That should be a small j, a small j. Um, I might I might email NTN and tell them they made a fuck up. Um, so that, that's NTNs, and you get the same deal with SKF. So this is the SKF book. Yeah, so on here, the SKF have done it correctly, so they've got the small J's. Um, loose fit, and then they've labelled it loose fit, transition fit, interference fit. So uh, an N7, which is, sorry, up here, is borderline transition interference fit. Uh, M7 is transition to interference fit and then you've got loose fit now if you look in any sort of bearing catalog or whatever like that you get something like this this little table general standards for radial bearings and fits uh, and it tells you what sort of fit to use um, shaft tolerance class and then there's another one for housings which is down here um, now I mean, this is a guide, but you can see the general guide is M7N7 for the kind of loads that a bike would see. Uh, whether it's M capital 7 or M small, small M7, um, it's, it's pretty much the same depending on, uh, in, independent of whether you've got a Campag type system or a Shimano system. So, so that's how that's done. Now, if the look implementation of it is absolutely cock on. Right, let me take you to this slide, which is, right, the next slide. So the BBC discussion. It is unlikely to creak by design because the bearings are massive and they are only seeing a small amount of load compared to what they can actually take. It's very stiff for that reason I just um, mentioned. I also mentioned you can change the crank length easily and I've also said about the high load rating. The implementation, so that is from design to actually implementing it to the, you know, the bike frame that I have in front of me is grade A. It is very good and I'll talk you through that in a second. Um, the disadvantage is it's a complete fucker to service because you'll need special tools to get the bearings off and they are just a complete fucker to service. I don't know. I mean, look in, in the UK and in Germany, getting hold of their spares can be problematic. Um, and I've also heard the same thing about look service in the US. Don't know about other countries. I imagine um, in in other countries it may be better, but you know that's that's where we are. Uh, and you're completely fucked if you get a problem with it. Now it does use a standard bearing, a six eight ten. Um, but if you break something else, you are screwed. So <laughs> so that's the disadvantage. You know you could go around to any sort of street corner or whatever decent bicycle shop and you can buy a shimano or sram or campak or well, maybe not so much campak but one of those crank sets fairly easily you can't get a z crank set that easily uh, and the other problem technical problem is it's quite a narrow width um now the best crank sets are ones where bearings are widely spaced in this case, the bearings are fairly narrow, so they're like BB30 width, but um, they're massive, and the tolerances that Look have done, uh, Look have, have put into their um, crank set, mean you can probably overcome it. So in an ideal world, you want those bearings as wide as apart, but because these bearings are massive, you know, you, you're trading trading one thing for another. So um, yeah, there you go. And the spares, well, because they're proprietary, they are expensive. Right, BB6, right, let me show you the 3D. So what I've done is I have, this is a 3D of a look BB65. Um, and really it's just a masterclass in manufacturing. So let me take a cut through here and then talk you through it. Right, first thing to note is this bottom bracket is one piece 
of aluminium all the way through. So it is, um, I mean, it's round. <laughs> in this, can you believe this? In this day and age, the bottom bracket is round and we are appreciating a bottom bracket that is round. What the fuck is going on? So, so, so it's round, okay? And um, the, it's basically the tube has been made all the carbon around it has been you know put there and then afterwards the holes for the cables have been machined um, and you can clearly see that so that's the sequence of events if you sorry if you look at this bottom bracket from left to right it almost reads like the skf manual right first thing is okay it's round and it's concentric so the two sides if i turn this off this side yeah and this side which are the two bearing landings are concentric so um yeah so let me just so that's a section through it so this which is where one bearing sits and this which is where the other bearing sits are concentric within reason um okay Ah, oh, bollocks, fuck, right. Right, if we go from left to right, first thing is there is a lead. So the lead allows you to push the bearings in easily. Now, because it's a machined bottom bracket and someone obviously realizes that, someone at look has obviously realized the limitation of carbon in the sense that it's shit, right? So to make sure that you can line up the sides one over the other, They've made it out of aluminium. So first of all, yeah, you've got a lead and then you have a bearing seat. Now the bearing seat, because it's machined and not reliant on shrinkage of carbon, it is round. Um, and then there's a chamfer here. So there's a chamfer. And if you look in the NTN book, or is it the SKF book? Fucking hell, I can't remember. It talks about chamfers and radiuses. Yeah. So you've got radiuses, bearing specific radiuses. It's quite important. And the look engineer has obviously adhered to that. You've then got a bearing axial stop. Now the axial stop locates the bearing axially. Now again, Whoever has done this, so this is the NTM book. Let's look up 68, 10, 50 mil, 50. Yeah, so 50, 7. So this bearing here, let's zoom in. Yeah, that bearing there comes with these dimensions. So it gives you the big DA which is the, um, the the maximum length of axial stop and the look um, but BB65 adheres to that it's also got a radius on there because that that is a stress razor so someone has obviously considered that as well uh, a stress razor is a point where something could crack so they've they've a sharp point is likely to crack whereas rounded isn't that's why aeroplane windows have rounded corners to stop crack propagation um so yeah so that that axial stop is reinforced then you've got the the gubbins where the center of the um bottom bracket goes through and then you've got this locating so i think it's a locating surface for for holding the bottom bracket because half the problem is when you get to thin walled metal structures and you take your lathe near it, they tend to collapse. So someone has, has considered that. Uh, and then you've got the same deal on the other side. So you've got the, because it's a symmetrical bottom bracket, you've got the axial stop, radius, um, uh, the axial stop, sorry, um, bearing seat, and then it ejects out there. Now you might be thinking, well, this doesn't look like anything special. Um, and to be honest, it's not. It just works because someone has thought about it, decided they can't do it in carbon fiber, and then used um, aluminium to do it. So 
Now, what more can I say to that other than, well, there's nothing else to say really. Right, let me take you to the PowerPoint again. Right, um, so this is, uh, put the pen on. This is where the bearing has spun. So if you look carefully, the bottom bracket is extremely round, apart from in this region here, where it's elliptical, and that is where the bearing has spun. And then because of the nature of a um, pedal system, uh, or pedaling, you're only really putting power down for maybe a third of the revolution. Um, the other two thirds, you're bringing your foot back up to the top and then putting it down again. So that's why you've got this sort of, it looks egg shaped just on one side and it's classic um, dimensions of uh, of a spun bearing. So that's that's why this is, has got that problem. I've exaggerated the deviation slightly because you won't be able to see it with this scale. Um, this is a radar plot on, um, on, on this computer system. Normally, um, we don't use this, we use something else. Normally, what would happen is you would, and if you're not familiar with engineering, normally we measure angles actually in radians, not so much in degrees. So, and they're measured from, uh, well, that will be zero. And then positive is actually anti-clockwise. <laughs> so um, that's zero. So for example, what you would class as 90 degrees, which is from there to there, is actually pi over two. 180 degrees will be pi. And uh, that is, Two seventy, which is uh, three pi over four. I can't remember. It's two pi. Oh, I can't even remember. It's two pi times three quarters. I think. I can't even remember. It's a you see. <laughs> you might be thinking, "Fucking hell, he can't understand. He doesn't know." Um, in reality, most angles that engineers come across are measured from naught to pi, so naught to uh, 180 degrees. You'd never really go all the way around, so you're only ever working in half a circle. So anyway, right. This sort of um, spun bearing problem is completely unavoidable if there is an interference fit on the axle because the weakest link is on the outside and then that's where you get the... Um, uh, the damage. It's a textbook example of a spun bearing um, on on sinusoidal loading. So you know that's if you're going to go look in a textbook. Actually, you don't really get these in textbooks. You just see them out in the field. And um, that's that is uh, you know, a textbook example. It would be quite difficult to spot that with just a vernier. Um, it's quite tricky to do that. Right, the fixes. Right, first of all, we will go for an N7 fit into the bike frame, both sides. Now, one of the things that um, piss me off, well, not piss me off, but I get fucked off quite regularly with is um, I get people questioning my engineering, which I don't mind, provided that they can rise to the technical level. Now, some of these people, actually work for ceramic speed but they don't actively say we are we work for ceramic speed so every now and again I know who these people are um, I just like to remind them who the dog's bollocks is um, and I want to encourage them to raise that bar a bit higher so this bottom bracket is me raising the bar slightly and there are another eight bars to go and there is um, a lot of stuff that you don't see, which over time you do see and then something else goes above it to replace it. But anyway, right. The next thing, <laughs> I've digressed, but the next thing is this Zyro Fisher, I don't know what the fuck it is, it's bollocks. Um, 
the what is it? Is it's like a BSA BB65 to BSA adapter thing is shit. So we need to avoid that. Fuck that. Um, and what what my bottom bracket needs is a compound interference on the inner and the outer to make it stiff. Um, and I'll talk you through that in a second. This is the first two piece Hambini BB um, out in the world. Well, not no, that's a lie. <laughs> but it, it's it's um, not a one off. But you can see some of the features that are available here that aren't in others. So the forthcoming BSA bottom bracket that I'm making has some of this stuff in it. Um, now, to be honest, working on this look bike is quite good because everything's round, everything's concentric. It makes my life easy. Um, working on other bike frames is just crock of shit because <laughs> they're just designed by the smallest wank stain of society who can give it all the, the talk and then just not produce anything. Right, let me show you the 3D fucking hell, fuck, right. File, window, shit, right. This is the bottom racket. So we've got the shell, which I've drawn. Well, you've seen that already. Uh, this is the bottom racket. So if we take a cut through here. Uh, tick. So this piece is all one piece. So it's an interference there and it goes through. We've got 6806 bearings in either side because the chap said he wanted Shimano. Uh, and then we have this on the outside with an interference on this surface and the inner surface. And I've put a gap in for an O-ring. The thing with uh, interference fit is, um, well, it's, that's technically not an interference on the inside, but it's um, very close fit. Uh, the O-ring is there because it aids, it's a, it's a mounting aid more than anything. So it's a mounting aid um, to allow you to make it easier to mount. I've also put a slight taper here. If you look, see that surface there is tapered. Again, that is to make it easier to mount. Um, and because I'm a precision engineer and not a wank stain, although some people might disagree, uh, I've got this control compression so that it looks the dick. Looks the dick. <laughs> looks the shit. Looks the shizzle. Um, yeah, I mean, that that is technically, well, this is just technically just a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece of engineering because I've designed it. And uh, my name is not Ceramic Speed or Gary Myhot from BB Infinite. I am the dog's bollocks. So Hambini's bottom bracket, which is... Oh, well, in fact, some fuckers out there, <laughs> I like to digress, right? Some fuckers out there said I was so far up my own ass that da 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 da. I didn't read the rest of it, but that I was so far up my own ass. Well, to be honest, if you were as good as me, you would be up your own ass. So there you go. <clears throat> You're just jealous. You'll get over it. Um, yeah, I know, I irritate people, don't I? Fuckers. Right. Uh, yeah, right. So, oh, fuck that. Right. Have I digressed enough? But some people tune in for engineering entertainment. This one's just turned into boredom because I haven't ripped anyone's uh, strip yet. Right, fuck. The video, just while I'm on this, there was gonna be, well, I was contemplating making the bottom bracket for this frame out of a material called Superlight. Um, the difference in Superlight is it is a material that if you watch weight weenies, uh, they'll say the material doesn't exist, but this is a video to show you it does. So this is a normal Hambini bottom bracket. It's a BB86 one. And if I put that onto the scale, if I put it that way, it is 97 grams. Now you can go on the internet and look to make sure that's not a fix. That is 97 grams. This is a super light bottom bracket. So it looks the same, um, but it's not. This is uh, it's considerably lighter. And this was developed 
because, well, this is developed by the guys in Germany, at one of the materials suppliers that I work quite closely with. Um, and they gave this to me because uh, one of the teams or one of the personal individuals I supply in the Pro Peloton wanted a bottom bracket that had the same stiffness as that one, but um, was significantly lighter. So this one is only 63 grams. So there's a significant difference in weight. So it's 30 grams. Um, bear in mind, a lot of that weight is actually the bearings. So the the actual aluminium body of the um, super light material is um, is a lot lighter. Right, to get this frame ready for the bottom bracket, what I'm doing is I'm putting a copious amount of grease around the outside. I've already cleaned it. And I'll do the same on the other side. There was a lot of thread lock, uh, not thread lock, retaining compound in there, but we've removed that. So this is the bottom bracket. It comes in two pieces. So we've got uh, the main body here, it's unibody construction, and the, uh, well, the other side locker on that side. You can see there's a small O-ring in there. That is an AS568A O-ring. Um, this is gonna go in um, and then hopefully well, you can see the difference between this and this. So there's a huge difference in terms of engineering. They'll both take a Shimano uh, crank set, which was the um, end game. Bike's ready, and now we'll start pushing it in. So we just carry on pushing all of this in. It'll go stiff like that. And then we can withdraw this. Take the pusher tool out, wipe all the grease off. That's it, installed. So all we've got to do now is insert the bearings. So that is the look bottom bracket. You can see it's one piece all the way through and the lock nut is well, the lock locking cap is on the other side. So we're just going to install the bearings now. One in. I really should get presses for both sides, but I didn't. Never mind.
Okay, so that is now done. You can disconnect all of this and then try cranking it to see how well it spins. So caps in, I've got every faith today. Chain lines bang on. That's probably one of the best ones I've done. Um, that's really good. But that is, I really, to be honest, I really enjoyed this one. This one was really good because, uh, I mean, it even looks good. <laughs> it just looks the lick. <laughs> Not often I'm really pleased with myself, but I am really pleased with myself with that one. <laughs> Sorry. We might as well have a few more spin shots. Those little fuckers at Ceramic Speed, you know, they can uh, have a look at their bottom bracket engineering, see if they can do a better job than me. Now, some people have said I'm self-indulgent. Well, I'm not really. I'm just plain. I'll just take the crank off to show you what it looks like, the end result, if I can actually get it off. Ah. onto there, cap on that side, so that is BB65 Hambini bottom bracket, I'd go for so far as to say that's the most beautiful bottom bracket in the world, look at it, oh it is just the lick, oh the shizzle, we like that. And that brings us to the end of this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed looking at the most beautiful bottom bracket in the world. Um, if you want one of these, then um, do drop me an email. Now, um, if you did like this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit subscribe. And um, uh, check out my website at hambinigot.com. Thanks very much, and until next time.